Welcome to a new episode on the Technomora channel. We really hope you will enjoy watching it and invite you to tell us what you think of it by leaving your reactions below the video. And now, please allow me to present your host, Technomora. Thank you, Julie, for that very nice introduction. Well, tonight, uh, dear viewers, um, we're going to try to uh, restore and who knows, maybe even repair uh, this tuner, a Blaupunkt Delta 2091. And I already have the service manual, but I also have the tuner itself. Now, seen from this side, the front looks really decent. No scratches, no blemishes, no lost knobs. The sliders seem to function correctly. A bit stiff, but maybe they are a bit dirty. Um, the knobs, I think, do function. The power cable is, well, has been modified or, well, cut for some reason. Um, well, these little nothings are supposed to be antenna wires. So I don't think these would work very well, so out with them. Okay. These are the speaker outputs right here. Uh, but there are also speaker outputs here. So I'm guessing since this is a quadraphonic uh, receiver, um, these are possibly the outputs uh, for the rear two speakers, whereas these two here, with remnants of cables too, these two speakers outputs here are probably the two front speaker outputs. Uh, 4 ohm impedance. Um, what else? Hmm. I don't know what this specifically is. But yeah. These are... Okay, this is a, a tape recorder uh, input-output, I'm guessing. This might be microphone input output, I'm not sure. Uh, might be a pickup input, uh, but a, a ceramic uh, phonograph input. This is a magnetic phonograph input. Now we can have a look, a closer look at the uh, inside of the tuner amplifier. So this is the back of the back panel. Looks undamaged, not too dirty either. So what can we see? Well, for one thing, there is this massive um, a really massive uh, transformer here. Okay. And it's probably, yeah, it's probably attached to the bottom plate, which is particle board. That might be a problem. And then inside we see part of the electronics. Down there we see a ferrite rod and part of the dial mechanism. Yeah. And then probably
probably what we see down there is the IF board of the tuner. So that's interesting. Um, oh, a uh, small detail. I also spot uh, a fuse here. So that might be an interesting detail to remember. And then these, I'm guessing, are the output transistors. Alright, so I released the four screws holding down the amplifier board. So now let's see if we can slide it out without causing any damage. Gently. Okay. Seems to be coming out. Alright, let's see on the inside. Wait, 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 wait. There is something stuck here. Okay, got it. Okay. Alright, so this was stuck a bit. So now here it goes. This is a kind of grounding. Alright, so we disconnected the grounding. So now let's slide it all out. Ooh, it's it's quite dirty. But there you go. Alright. So there ladies and gentlemen is a close first look at the tuner board of the Blaupunkt Delta 2091 usually people will want to fire up something um, just out of uh, curiosity to see whether it still works or not but and, and sometimes I do too but um, in this case I think I want to go easy and uh, I'm going to curb down my impatience and replace uh, the electrolytics on uh, on the boards first before I uh, start firing up anything because in my experience uh, one bad electrolytic can either make something function really bad or even uh, destroy something all right all the capacitors have been replaced and before I'm going to mount the at least this uh, PCB back to the whole power supply assembly. I just wanted to give you a final look uh, on uh, the back side, in fact, of the PCB, just to show you what it looks like. And I, I discovered what I think is is a an error the engineers at Blaupunkt uh, made. Okay, so this is the back of the PCB. I'm, I'm going to clean it up a little bit, but 
basically that's what it is. Um, now there is an uh, I discovered an error, uh, namely that uh, the PCB, as you as you can tell, has two mounting holes, one there and one over there. These mounting holes were never used, and I'll show you why. Because suppose you would use the little tabs with which the PCB was held in uh, to put them into the mounting holes. Let me show you. So suppose you would in want to insert the, the print with the mounting holes, you can't. For the very simple reason that the, the pins that come out of the transformer would never fit in their holes, which are right where my thumb is. So the engineers had to find a quick and dirty solution to mount the PCB to the body of the power supply. And what they did was in a the factory, they actually cut an extra little hole there and a, a notch here so that when the print is mounted correctly onto the uh, transformer um, uh, the, the print could still be clamped against the body of the transformer let's say or, or the power supply. So there you go. Uh, yeah, a, a, a little error the engineers made. Now, uh, there's basically there are two more things that I need to do. Uh, that is to reconnect the, these two little wires you see here to the pins of the transformer. And um, I removed the heatsink from the from the transistor you see right here. So what I'm going to do is before I place back the heatsink is I'm going to put some uh, heat conductive paste uh, on the inner heatsink so that uh, the heat transfer to the outer heatsink is a little bit more efficient. Uh, uh, but that will be it. Uh, then I will subject the power supply, uh, supply to, uh, let's say, a small test, a power-up test. And uh, when it checks out, then we move on to the next PCB. Alright, I'm getting ready to test one side of the power supply. The um, the power supply is connected to the AC, that white connector you see over there, and we're feeding it 226 volts AC, which is a little bit on the high side. Now, the switch pins or the switch connectors are these two pins here. So I'm going to short or a one pin to the other and that should switch on the power supply. Now the first thing we're going to measure is the AC voltage uh, on these two pins right there and as you can tell they should be somewhere around 7 volts uh, output. Keep in mind um, there's no load okay on the power supply so here we go so we switch it on I'm getting 6 point well almost 6.7 volts at that output there alright so now Let's switch off the power supply again and move the 
measurement leads up here. Like this. Alright. So now we're measuring these two. Okay? And in and when you look at the schematic, what we're actually going to measure uh, are these two pins here. So this one here and that one there. Okay. Now there's uh, something weird and I'll, I'll tell you in a minute what I mean by that. So let's measure it. There you go. Uh, hang on. I'm not getting any measurements. Uh, there you go. Okay. So, this is the voltage we're measuring. 40 volts. Alright. Now, Keep in mind, uh, there is no load on the output, okay? Now, uh, the print board says plus 63 volts, right? Now, if you look at the schematic, and you look at the output of the rectifier bridge, which is this one here yeah so this is ground all right pins 34 and 35 are grounds this is plus yeah pins 37 and 36 yield 37 volts now these voltages are measured in circuit okay so we measure a little bit less than 40 volts, okay? But the print board says plus 63 volts. So yeah, that's a bit of a weird thing, but I'm guessing um, either uh, the print board uh, writing here there um, is mentioning the peak voltage that might appear uh, on that pin or maybe this is just an error uh, um, so yeah that's a bit of a weird thing but if you look at the schematic though we're in the ballpark of the 37 volts all right uh, remember these voltages are in circuit the voltage we measured right now uh, is without any sort of load okay so what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to uh, turn the power supply around and then we can measure uh, the voltages on all these connectors here. Alright, I'm measuring now the voltage between pins 23 or 24 and pin 31 on the power supply. Okay, and pin 31 should yield 41 volts DC. And the voltage I'm measuring is 42.1 volts. So, yeah, and the voltage should be 42 volts. So we're pretty close to what it should be. If you're curious how I clean a print board, um, well, have a look at this. So, on the right you see 
what the print bo board looked like before I started cleaning on the left that's how it looks like after cleaning now what do I use to do that well I simply use half hard hair brush like this I think this is pork hair so it's not extremely stiff but it's stiffer than uh, an, a normal soft paintbrush yeah, so it has slightly stiffer hairs and I use um, methanol alcohol to clean the whole thing off and um, down at the print board I put a rag to catch any runoffs uh, while cleaning you know we, you don't want this dirt to run into whatever is lying uh, at the edge or below the print board right so before after the little board you see here which is built around a TBA 490 chip is in fact the stereo decoder for the FM part of the tuner and um, it's built on a separate little board which you can extract uh, from the main board and in, uh, there's a little trick to that so it, should you ever need to have to remove it you see this knob here so what you do is you turn it first in that direction all right when the flat side of the knob is flush with the print board you lift the print board a little bit then you turn the knob like this all right and now you can extract the print board there you go so you need to do it in two times you can't do it in one go you need to uh, turn the knob in one direction first then in the other and then you can place the print board back so now let's suppose we need to put it back so you put the knob like this you slide the little print board into the connector like this you give it a little push and make sure oh see we're not quite in yet uh, like that you give it a little push like that you turn the knob until the flat side is flush with the print board like that you give it an extra little push and then you lock it in with the knob like this and there you go it turns out that um, to be able to reach the uh, PCB side to unmount the electrolytics is actually easier than I thought it would be. Uh, you'll remember that at the back of the pickup module there was this metal covering, alright? And um, in essence, really, what it turns out or what it boils down to to be able to reach the uh, copper uh, trace side of the PCB you just need to unsolder three points at the top of this metal cover yeah and uncrimp uh, two of these tabs at the bottom of the print board all right so you, you still have to be a little bit careful though 
because the metal plate is soldered at these three points here. And obviously you have to apply quite a bit of heat and I used my desoldering gun to desolder those points. But um, if you're going to wick away the solder, I don't think that's going to be very easy. You know, because there's quite a lot of solder applied to these points. Um, yeah, I had to uh, suck away with the desoldering gun quite a lot of solder from these points. And you, you can tell I, I didn't manage to to pull away all of the solder. Yeah. So, also, though, at the other end of this tab here, there's a small grounding wire which goes through that little hole here and which is soldered to this tab on the other side of the PCB so the component side so yeah uh, basically it turns out to be a lot simpler than I thought to reach the electrolytics PCB side so uh, now I'm going to replace all replace all the capacitors, and uh, and then we're done. To mount back the preamp boards, you see here, so one for the left channel, one for the right channel. You also need a plastic tab, which holds uh, a preamp board fixed securely to the front and the main PCB. Now there is a small, although it looks symmetrical from all sides, this piece, um, it actually isn't. Because on one side there's a little slit down the middle. I'm sure you can see it right now. Whereas if you reverse it, there's no slit at all in the middle. Okay. And that slit actually fits over this tab here. So what you do is you slide this over the tab. Uh, hang on. Yep, like that. And then you push. I don't know if you can see this, but you, you have those little protruding tabs down there where I'm pointing. You push those into the square hole inside the main PCB. There you go. And once that is done, the preamp board is securely attached to the front part of the amplifier module and to the main PCB. Alright, so I'm measuring the voltages around the transistor designated as V104, okay, and um, I just can't get the voltages that are marked around the transistor. Also, when I measure the voltages around this resistor here, you see here, at this point here, I should be getting 14.1 volts and I'm measuring 42 volts which is really bad uh, I mean I hope it won't have destroyed the tuner uh, but yeah I am not measuring this voltage here at all I'm measuring 42 volts so just let me show you a few voltages that I'm measuring right now okay so this is the voltage I'm measuring at the resistor 168. Okay, and I'm measuring there. Okay, so now let's go to the other point of the resistor, which is here. Alright, oh. There we go. So there, we're measuring there. This is the voltage I'm getting there. 
41.9 all right so actually there's no voltage drop whatsoever over the resistor or very very little so that's not good um, also the transistor designated the, the NPN transistor V104 is one you see down there all right so let's measure the voltage at the collector which is right here okay so I'm measuring the voltage at the collector okay so and the voltage at the collector should be 19.7 volts all right this is the voltage I'm getting 12.48 so yeah um, there's something seriously seriously wrong somewhere either in this circuit right here so which seems to be pivotal for the whole tuner section in fact uh, or of course there's something downstream not right so what I'll do is I'll try to isolate this part of the circuit by desoldering a few things and then see whether we can measure normal voltages uh, in this circuitry All right, I disconnected the resistor 108, which is that one right here. So, in effect, uh, you could say disconnecting the lower part of the FM tuner here, you know, this part of the FM tuner is disconnected. Now, I want to measure voltages right here at R115 to see what happens when I switch between say uh, long wave or medium wave pressing one of these buttons or FM alright so yeah uh, and yeah uh, can you guess where R115 is yeah you guessed it it's down there right there all right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to select let's say medium wave all right so this button here okay and we're going to measure the voltage at r115 right here so let's switch on the tuner okay the tuner is engaged so now measure the voltages okay so right now we're measuring nonces now watch the meter 2.04 volts okay so now let's press the FM button okay now let's measure what the voltage is at R115 20 millivolts ouch there's quite a voltage drop going on there and it's unstable too so yeah there's something wrong <laughs> So, uh, I need to look on. Now, you might wonder, yeah, but why did you choose specifically, say, uh, for example, R115? Yeah, I mean, here it's pretty obvious why I did it. Um, if I interrupt this part here, I can at will put B plus into the rest of the circuitry of the tuner 
at least on this side, at will. And therefore you understand why I built a little wire bridge here. That yeah, which is down there, that, that little white wire you see down there. Now you might wonder, yeah, but why did you choose, for example, R115 here? Well, if you go back up from R115, yeah, you see that when you come at this bank of switches, which is for the lower frequency bands of the tuner, switch to this side of the circuitry, which goes up and up and up and up and up, and which finally ends up at the B+. plus. Alright? So, by unsoldering one end of R115, and soldering a little wire there, instead, I can switch on the whole circuitry after R115 on or off. Yeah? So, I choose components which are located at a, let's say, strategic point within the whole circuitry of the tuner. And uh, lo and behold, the uh, designers of this tuner uh, placed those specific resistors at a very easily accessible spot on the main PCB. So, why do you think they did that? Well, exactly for the thing that I'm trying to do now, namely to localize the problem within the larger PCB. Alright? So that's how I choose the components to unsolder or resolder. So I just interrupt the flow of the B plus at crucial strategic points. Um, I think I may have found part of the problem, or maybe the problem, uh, why the tuner isn't working. But, oh man, I really had to look for it. But, I mean, I don't know if I can show you, but let me try. So, let me try to zoom in on it. If I can. So right there, right here, what you see is one connector of a power resistor. Okay? And when I'm saying power resistor, I mean this one right here. Okay? R168, which is a ceramic power resistor of I think 10 watts, 390 ohms. Now, that contact, come on, focus, focus, yeah. That contact right here is one of the pins of that resistor. Now look at the trace just below it. Do you see the crack? The trace is broken. So yeah, that might cause a problem. So what I need to do is to, well, repair that trace. That, that trace there. And see if that will fix the problems or, or at least one problem. Alright, so I restored the tuner to its um, original looks. So I removed the little test wires from the print board, including uh, where the uh, B plus power supply is located. But I did make one important change. Now, originally, this 50 watt resistor, 430 ohms, uh, was actually, the role of this one was taken over by this one. This is a 390 ohms, 
5 watt resistor and it was located there all right now this resistor became ridiculously hot i mean like burning hot so i didn't like that very much because um, I'm convinced the heat of this resistor also degraded one of the traces to which it was soldered. You'll remember one of the traces was broken. Um, so I said no to that and I removed it altogether and replaced it by this 50 watt 430 ohms. Um, it's a little bit heavier, you could say 40 ohms more. But uh, that barely makes any difference in the voltage, so it dropped the B plus by about, let's say, 400 millivolts or so. Um, but now, when the tuner is functioning, I can easily put my fingers on the resistor, and okay, it's warm, but I'm not burning my fingers. So, yeah, I would say that's an improvement. Uh, any heat um, in an electronic device should be avoided because that tends to degrade everything around it. Now, um, what I didn't replace, and I'm still debating about replacing it or not, is the power transistor of, of the regulator circuit uh, of the uh, power supply, the main power supply. Supply. Now the regulator transistor, when I touch it, is is truly burning hot. Okay, so I can I can keep my finger on it for one or two seconds, and then it becomes extremely painful. So I would say this is about 80 degrees C right now, uh, which is hot, uh, not extremely hot, but, but hot enough to hurt. Uh, so I am debating with myself whether to replace this by a, a heavier power transistor and a better heating than this. But I guess the engineers back back in the day thought this transistor would do the job so I'll leave it in for now and uh, we'll see uh, maybe who knows it will fail sometime in the future and if that happens I will replace it by a heavier power transistor so there you go um, I also replaced a number of electrolytics you see them here in this little bag okay and uh, I counted them for those of you who are curious to know how many electrolytics there are um, and that includes tantalum uh, capacitors uh, I counted in total 44 electrolytic capacitors well electrolytics and uh, uh, tantalum capacitors, so polarized capacitors. And there are an assortment of other few parts like a, a, a Mylar film capacitor, the green one, which wasn't too good. Uh, there is one uh, Zener diode that I replaced. In fact, you can see the new Zener diode down there. The original one was a DY13. And I replaced it by a high wattage, brand new, 13.1 uh, volt uh, Zena diode. Okay. Oh yeah, and I replaced the little pot that was there. Because uh, the schematic calls for a 50 ohm pot. And when I measured it, it measured something like 300 or, or 320 ohms. So... Definitely, the pot that was originally there uh, was spent. So, that is about what I replaced in parts. Uh, there's one last detail that I should make you aware of if you're going to work on this type of tuner. That is that 
If you're going to measure positive voltages, especially around certain transistors, then you should connect your uh, multimeter to uh, the chassis uh, ground. And the chassis ground is either this edge all around the PCB, okay, so all around it, all of this is connected to ground or you use the designated ground pin which is here. Okay, so this pin here is a ground pin. Alright, so that's for positive voltages. However, if you need to measure negative voltages, then you'll connect up the negative lead of your multimeter to the B plus and I mounted a tiny little eyelet to which in the future if I need to I can make some measurements so you see the little eyelet down there okay so that is connected now to B plus alright so what you do is you connect the negative of your multimeter to this eyelet and then with the positive lead of your multimeter you measure negative voltages so and by negative voltages I mean the voltages that are written um, on the schematic alright and certain transistors especially the PNP ones uh, you do need to measure with the negative lead of your multimeter connected to the B plus okay so it's marked as UB plus on the schematic. So there, and then there's one final little detail that I want to show you, uh, which is that I replaced the filament uh, bulbs that were lighting up uh, the uh, tuning dial um, by blue LEDs. Yeah, I like uh, blue LEDs, uh, they are kind of cool, and I thought I would give the tuner a small update that way too. Also, LED uh, lights uh, don't heat up as much as filament uh, light bulbs. So you could see, you could say, two flies with one stone. All right, so the tuner seems to work. Um, everything seems to work in fact including the amplifier part so what I am trying to convince myself to do is maybe give the tuner an alignment so hmm, uh, let me think about that basically to do an alignment of the Blaupunkt tuner you need two things. You need a frequency generator which is capable of generating frequencies up to say 108 megahertz uh, and a VTVM so an old-fashioned old-style I should say old school uh, voltmeter like that one over there okay so that's an, an RCA voltmeter a volt ohmist I think uh, a lot of uh, electronics enthusiasts know this particular kind of meter they are very reliable and very accurate uh, analog meters so that's what you basically need as a tool uh, for aligning uh, the tuner. So uh, basically I, I used my uh, FreeTech uh, signal generator you see down there and my heat kit high frequency gener generator over there. So, and I use my, of course, my trusted uh, RCA volt ohmist VTVM. And that's all you need to do the alignment. Now, I could have shown you what.
what I did, but you know, trust me, I tried uh, to align the FM part of the tuner, and there was practically nothing to align. Uh, everything was spot on. The only thing I needed to manufacture myself was this little thingy here. Hang on. So, um, I had to manufacture uh, a little contact to uh, which is soldered a 100 picofarad uh, capacitor. I use the mica capacitor, but I, I suppose basically any capacitor would do. The most important thing, really, is this this tiny little contact at the end. Okay, because there is a measurement pin right in here right in that hole down there. I don't know if you guys can see this, but lucky, let me shine a bit of light. Basically what you need to do is to slide this little contact over that little pin down there to be able to inject the FM signal or well let's say the 10.7 IF frequency uh, you generate with, with your function generator okay uh, through a capacitor of course. Um, I injected a uh, uh, 100 millivolt uh, sinusoidal uh, voltage into this little wire thingy I soldered, and uh, and it worked. But uh, when I I uh, turned all the spools in order like they prescribe here so this is the service manual so there you have it so on the FM line here okay so if you you inject a signal via a 100 picofarad capacitor into measurement point 8 and that's the one I showed you right now, okay, down that little hole down there. And you inject basically a 10.7 megahertz signal. And I say, well, I use about a 100 millivolt signal strength, okay, to send down there. And you put your uh, VTVM, so your voltmeter basically okay uh, over the test points 2 and 3 first and the test points 2 and 3 are there so physically on the tuner they are there and they are marked with MP2 and MP3 which in German means uh, Messpunkt 2 und Messpunkt Dry. Okay, so you attach your multimeter to that, and then uh, what I did was to, um, well, you see it here, described here, you need to turn a whole lot of coils, okay, and I did it in that order to get a maximum. Uh, readout on my VTVM. Um, I used the 15 volts DC plus scale. You know, you see the button there. So, okay. It's on the 15 volts scale. 
So, um, I tuned these little coils here, uh, and you see there are quite a few of them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven coils, until you get a maximum signal measured over the points two and three. When that is done, you put your multimeter on the points four and five. Uh, which are right next to 2 and 3, of course, on the PCB. And then you set the, the zero point of your multimeter to the center. Okay, so the, the nice thing about these multimeters is that you can put the needle right in the middle, okay, which is necessary to align the, the tuner, okay, because the coil you need to align, which is in this case coil 706, okay, and coil 706 is the one here in this little box here, let me show you, it was actually down there, I had to break the, the wax seal to get at it, okay, and so you, you, You'll put your zero out your meter with the needle in the middle. And then when attached to the right measurement points, you will see while you turn the coil, the needle move either left or right. And you need to put it right in the middle to align the tuner. And that's what I did. So I went through all these steps one by one and uh, yeah it didn't make much difference actually uh, you know so it didn't make any sort of difference uh, well or maybe just a tiny little bit but really not worth talking about uh, so I'm not going to do the alignment for the AM band, um, which is, let's face it, in my country, pretty useless. There are no AM stations where I am, but I'm willing to give you a quick scan of the AM band just to show you what I mean. There are like three stations. So I'm not going to linger when there's music playing, okay? So here we go. Keep in mind, it's uh, half past four in the morning right now, so the atmospherics are ideal for AM transmissions right now. Yeah, it's really bad, uh, on the AM band, where I live anyway.
there you go. That was the whole AM band uh, in my country. Uh, maybe three or four stations and very, very bad reception. So I'm not even going to bother uh, aligning the AM circuitry. So what I'm going to do next is uh, put the whole tuner uh, and, and, and the amplifier part of course back into the case I clean the case as best as I could and I clean the knobs so now I'm going to put everything back to where it belongs into the case and I'm going to give you a final uh, once over of the whole tuner amplifier obviously you need to take off all the buttons which you might have inadvertently left on the tuner board like I did and uh, then sliding in the tuner board will go easier I also noticed that it's a little bit easier if you put in the board a little bit obliquely like this so not straight on but at a slight angle and that way you can fit in all the knobs and the meters uh, in one go yeah so without too much trouble also you need to use the special washers that were supplied uh, obviously uh, with the tuner and you make sure that the teeth point upward like this okay not the other way around and so what I do now is to screw in the screws finger tight yeah so that it's not extremely tightly attached and that way I can take a final look at the front of the tuner to see whether everything is nicely aligned if that's the case then I'll tighten them with a screwdriver if you ever wonder how to reinstall unmounted parts uh, into a device like for example this tuner amplifier um, a good trick is to remember the acronym LOFI alright so last out first in okay so that way uh, you'll always remember uh, in what order to put in uh, the components uh, to put back the components of a device or an appliance like this uh, amplifier tuner just remember lo-fi uh, what also helps is to keep on a certain direction in which you uh, unmount and remount parts yeah so if you keep in mind always to unmounting left to right and top to bottom or the reverse way um, generally that will also help now the tricks I'm giving you are not uh, absolute okay but they might help you to mount back stuff so I mounted back the uh, amplifier into the cabinet there you go so all I need to do now is reconnect it to the tuner which you do like that it's that simple right everything is mounted back the amplifier the tuner board the power supply and all the connectors are back in place one for the tuner uh, excuse me let me see one for the tuner one for the amplifier notice that I dressed all the leads the way it should be dressed you know, nicely tucked away and 
uh, far as far away as possible from any hot component. I mean literally hot or uh, on which there are there could be high voltage. And finally all the components are built into the Blaupunkt 2091. So let's do a final demo of the tuner amplifier. Mind you, I'm not going to uh, linger on any music uh, stations uh, for the well-known reasons, uh, but I am going to scan quickly through the FM band. There you go. So, all in all, um, I'm really happy uh, how the tuner and amplifier turned out to be. It works great. It sounds great. Um, yeah, I'm glad we saved this one from uh, the garbage dump. And who knows, maybe um, it will serve another 50 years. Probably not in my household, but who knows, maybe in a distant future, in some vintage loving uh, household somewhere in the world. So, I hope you enjoyed watching the restoration of this uh, Blaupunkt Delta 2091 tuner amplifier from the 70s. So, um, thanks again and I'll see you soon. Thank you for watching.